we now move on to our first keynote speaker of the day. In 2002, she was selected as a future Indigenous leader in Australia. In 2003, she was awarded the inaugural Gladys Alphick Award. And in 2005, she was awarded the prestigious internationally recognized Sydney Meyer Facilitator Prize. She has worked with the Adelaide Fringe Festival, with the Festival of the Sun, and with the Adelaide Festival of the Arts. Currently, currently she is the program, a community program manager at Kaklu Youth <laughs> Arts in Adelaide. She has produced Black Knight, South Australia's leading Indigenous Youth Arts Showcase as part of the 2005, 2007, 2009, and 2011 Come Out Festival. She is from the nations of Narunga, Wirangu, of Wajabalak. Tēnā e tewi, whakanuia mai, tēnei o ngā māreikura, mai tewi taketake o Ahitreiria. Here to speak with us this morning about her experiences across Indigenous Australia with particular reference to South Australia. Please welcome Leanne Buckskin. Good morning, everybody. Arts by, for, with young people, an Australian perspective, but probably more as a South Australian perspective. Kaklu House, this, in, this is uh, the organisation I work for in Adelaide. The house is a really interesting building. The history of Kaklu um, House dates back to European settlement. Um, it's uh, pretty impressive. It, it sits in North Adelaide, um, up behind the Adelaide Cricket Ground, or Adelaide Oval as it now is. Um, and it sits on the traditional lands of the Ghana people. The house was owned by Sir Langdon Benython, one of Adelaide's wealthy families, and he named the building Karklu um, from an area of Cornwall, uh, where his ancestors lived. So. The house was then purchased by the Adelaide City Council in 1965. The state uh, government wanted to build the festival hall there, but then they decided to build the Adelaide Festival Centre on the Torrens um, River. So Don Dunstan, um, the Premier of South Australia in 1971, then announced that Karklu House would become the centre uh, for creative activities for young people under the name of South Australian Performing Arts Centre for Young People. So, Karklu is at the forefront of the South Australian youth artscape and its passionate organisation fuelled by innovation of youth culture and driven to develop the next generation of artistic minds. We provide young people with opportunity uh, to try different art forms. We support emerging artists to develop craft and advocate for youth arts practice. Last year we celebrated 40 years um, Karklu Youth Arts has given the children of South Australia outstanding creative uh, experiences. As those children grow up, many of them uh, take the step into a career in the arts. Many of South Australia's performers, visual artists and arts managers can trace their early inspirations from some time spent with Karklu, as artists in the early stages of their career may get support and assistance to build their professional careers. I've just gone over to become Aboriginal Arts Development Manager and I managed for six years the community program which encompassed not only all of the Aboriginal content but also the school holiday programs which we're quite famous for. And quite often we'll have parents come through going, well, you know, I was a child and now I'm bringing my own children. So we've got generations coming through which is really lovely. 
This is a new program that our arts and education manager, Lee Mangan, has developed. We work with children from five up to 26 years old, although 26 now is being pushed to 30. So what she's now doing is looking at that lower age of around the three to four age group, and they just did a photography workshop. And so they were taken out with an artist uh, into the city of Adelaide and taken to numerous significant sculptures. And so you've got these little ones looking up and, you know, taking the photo of the butt of, you know, some famous explorer or something like that. But, you know, it's pretty cute. An arts rich childhood improves literacy, numeracy, social skills and personal development. Arts for identity, involvement in the arts helps children and young people develop confidence, a strong sense of identity and offers cultural expression and celebration. So we've got animation workshops, filmmaking, breaking and aerosol workshops as well, you know, breaking the stereotypes down of what graffiti art is, it's just not tagging. I just came off the desert doing aerosol workshops in one of the communities called Yalata and the young woman, Nish, who I work with, said tagging's like a dog weighing up against a pole. So I think that changed kids' perspectives on what tagging meant. That's Nish there. So this is a new initiative that we have, and very interesting one. Uh, fifth quarter um, is a new uh, business initiative, I guess. It um, was launched in May by the chair of the Australia Council, Rupert Meyer, and um, it's being developed within uh, a new precinct just outside of the city called the Bowdoin Precinct, and um, it's established to encourage artists to pursue entrepreneurial thinking. So it connects artists, business, innovation, new ideas, arts models and fosters collaboration, resource sharing, enterprise development in incubation. We run state grants as well for children and young people. Um, it's to assist young artists, 26 and under, uh, to pursue their career development. Um, some of the other opportunities through this is uh, they can explore new art forms and expose you to emerging methods, access to cultural heritage, uh, young artists who are making brave, exciting new work, um, establish artists to work alongside of emerging artists, sharing their influences, inspirations, methods and core practice. Car Clue continues to you know, offer professional learning um, workshops for South Australian teachers so over the past few years, um, whilst we've focused on visual arts, um, we can tailor it to any art form uh, to meet the needs of, of the teacher and the artist and the student. Um, our arts and education staff understand that growing need for teachers to build their skills and knowledge in the arts um, as um, the Australian curriculum, the arts is implemented. We have a new Australian curriculum being rolled out next year. Explore Arts, one of the things that I did in the position was to review this program. It's been running for 40 years. I feel it was very much tailored towards the middle class to upper class. Um, um, and so one of the things that I wanted to do was open it up to disadvantaged communities and make it more affordable uh, for uh, other members of our society. So. Um, one of the things that I did was offered a full day of programs that kids could go through rolling workshops um, at really affordable prices. So, you know, a day of um, workshops could co cost $100, whereas, you know, this uh, sits around about $30. Also that women's roles have changed in 40 years. So, you know, no longer is it about dropping your child off at 10 o'clock in the morning and picking them up at three. Um, that the, one of the feedbacks was that, you know, we need to be able to get the kids there before work and pick them up after work. So our hours have changed as well. We offer arts administration traineeships. At the moment, we haven't been able to fund. We usually have 10 trainees that go across our arts organisations throughout South Australia. Um, the only one sits with me at the moment. Um, and that was a request by BHP Billiton. Um, BHP Billiton has a big mine in Roxby Downs. 
Uh, initially, there is a story behind that. They fund our education program. They're very keen to fund uh, Aboriginal uh, communities. However, at the time, my grandmothers uh, from Cooper Pedy fought the Howard government on the dumping of uranium mine. So politically, I didn't want to align my, myself or my program to that. Uh, so three years on, they came back to me and um, the board and management asked me how I felt about it today. I went back to my nanas and they said, Leanne, there's been some learning out of this. Mining's not gonna go away. We have to learn how to work together. So with that um, and their wisdom and their learning, um, we offered the only arts administration traineeship for an Aboriginal person. One young man, uh, Derek Lynch, who's up here, um, he's from a small community south of Alice Springs. He did one of the traineeships with me about three or four years ago. And um, I've got another young man about to graduate next month and an advertisement uh, for the next is coming up with another to follow. Car Clue had been around for, you know, well, nine years, 31 years, and it hadn't really uh, tapped into Indigenous communities. The only thing that they uh, had programmed was this event called Black Night. It ran on the sniff of an oily rag, a $20,000 budget. It was a last minute as a part of the Come Out Festival, uh, at the Australian Festival for Young People, which is housed out of Karkaloo Youth Arts. And, you know, three weeks out, they'd be saying, can we get someone in just to organise this event? I thought that wasn't good enough. Um, so when I came on board, they wanted me to develop the program for them. One of the things as I looked at this event, I produced four black nights. Uh, it's now 16, 18 years old, and um, it's now uh, a budget well over $100,000. Um, it is run by young people. They run a committee, they program it. Through that committee, they say which areas of event management do they want to have some experience in. So they do everything from marketing, stage management, tech, you name it. It's really successful. It got to a stage where I believe things need to move on. Um, and one of the things was it's had to come out of car clue and go back into community hands. So it's now now moved on was my goal to see it go to Kuru Indigenous Youth Performing Arts Company in Port Adelaide. And they managed to secure significant uh, private monies, um, over $600,000 worth uh, over three years, so which they now built this program around. So they now go out into remote regional uh, communities, develop the work over a year, showcase it through Black Knight. So not only is it an artistic and cultural showcase, it is about giving experience within the sector as well to young people. So um, narrowing it now down to uh, remote outreach programs which I run, um, I'd like to just share with you a story. This will give you a bit of context about remote uh, Aboriginal Australia. I first visited the APY lands community nearly 15 years ago. As an observer and a city-based Aboriginal person, I was not prepared for the destruction petrol sniffing had brought to the Unangal people. I witnessed many children young people's lives in despairing disarray as a result of petrol sniffing, their vitality and innocence destroyed by its numbing effects. Witnessing this firsthand challenged my notion that connection to country, speaking your language, and having culture passed on from elders is enough to keep remote people and their communities healthy. Rather, what I saw were damaged children, young people, and entire communities gripped by petrol sniffing. The damaged ones ruled the night. Dressed in hooded clothing and with petrol tins suctioned to their faces, they took over the community and acted out in a ro robotic manner, their behaviour violent and out of control. People feared the night and what their children became when they got high. Mothers shared their pain with me and expressed their desperation to get their children well and happy. Other members of the community didn't understand why this was happening and felt powerless at night when um, they would lock themselves indoors in a self-imposed curfew. 
Old people were frightened and confused because they felt that petrol had stripped the Unangul people of their cultural pride and dignity, their community disabled and in crisis instead. In early 2004, petrol sniffing in remote Aboriginal communities hit the media big time. But this time it gave me the opportunity to contribute. In 2005, the APY Lands Project was seeded. The APY Lands Celebrating Healthy Communities portrays a journey towards renewal, hope and lifestyle change. We join forces with the APY community to confront, challenge and reverse the negative impact that substance misuse was having on them and their children and young people. The project provided young people with a voice and the tools to artistically express their thoughts about their issues in their lives. So obviously we're, you know, down the track. We've certainly committed and responsive to people who live within remote communities. We want tangible improvements. It's important to bring a highly skilled team together. A lot of the communities take whoever who knocks on their door. It's not good enough. Ultimately, everything that I do, including the contemporary stuff in the city to what happens in remote communities is underpinned by the fundamental principle of culture. At the moment, I service all of remote South Australia. Um, I'm working on a huge language project funded by the federal government. Uh, Aboriginal languages are considered an endangered language. So I'm working with all 22 schools across remote South Australia, recording Inma stories, language stories that hold the true ancient language of 80,000 years. It's the first time it's been done. With that is Walcott, getting kids to not only learn the song and the stories, but also the body designs that are painted that are also not only reflected in our paintings, our artwork as well. Again, investing in young people for the future and ensuring that visual arts industry is thriving takes two days to get to where I gotta go. Um, yeah, it's a long way. We stop at Cooper Pedy on the way if we take a four wheel drive from the city with a trailer, full crew. And um, also on the west coast where the bite is, that's my grandfather's country, Wurrungal country. And I'm obviously with that southern Pitjantjara and also related right up through the APY lands into Alice Springs as well, over to Victoria, New South Wales, down into Tasmania, and also across the border of WA. The APY lands is 103,000 square kilometres of desert country. The Maralinga, Jarraja lands, is known for the British atomic testing, which my family went through as well, and that land has been handed back. Both need permits to go on to that country. There was uh, monies left over, uh, basically the state government uh, put it a tender out, a call out to arts organisations in South Australia from the Alcohol Education Rehabilitation Foundation, ARF, and uh, we all put a bid in. One day the Premier walked in, saw it on the table and said, wonderful to see remote um, kids getting a look in. The essence of the project was um, working with 15 to 25 year olds, um, building capacity and a mentoring project over three years. It was looking at the engaging of petrol sniffing um, and you know, substance misuse. The program was multi-layered. We believe that um, you know, young people had the capacity to have a positive impact on their community. Um, we achieved this by bringing together professional arts, education, health and employment uh, people um, and they committed to us to lay down a foundation of artistic and cultural programs that gave young Unangul people um, the opportunity, recognition and pride through artistic and cultural expression. Yo, yo. 
wati kucuma lagi mengganggu. The key thing to this project was that we consulted over 16 months, sitting down, travelling out to community with elders, young people having lots of cups of tea. Face-to-face -face meetings was crucial. We delivered 69 workshops, involved nine schools from five different communities. We covered intergenerational participation, songwriting, recording, music industry development, filmmaking, lifestyle, skills, Feldenkrais, contemporary dance, digital media and communications. The workshops were often presented and celebrated to the community with community gatherings. Also out of this came three emerging bands that went on to have a career as well. The Armada Band, Red Sand Band and the Awancha Band. So I'm just going to keep playing you something else I think it's important to see and, and hear from young people. My name is Stuart Kekamango and I'm from Raymond Kinning. That's where I grew up. And my father, father, he was a songwriter, guitarist. And when I was a boy, I remember he used to sing with me and I, I used to sing with him, with my dad and my father's plan, you know. He was looking forward, you know, my future, what it's gonna be. And here I'm now and I'm happy. Hello, my name is Stuart K. Kamango. I'm in Amara Aboriginal community in Central Australia. This is a song about a man who drinks too much grog and he starts a fight with his wife. It's a bad man. It's a bad man. It's a bad man.
So I wanted to just quickly mention about two-way learning. Whilst we come into communities, it's really important that we also enable young people and their communities to teach us. And when I say two-way learning, it's about learning language, it's about going out um, and exploring country, getting people to show you, you know, their significant sites uh, and talk about the essence of their spirituality. So the team had a steep learning curve um, in cross-cultural communication. Um, they're needing to rethink their methodology and to listen to what young people wanted from the program. So we did some role reversal stuff um, and also that, you know, the challenging thing for non-Indigenous people working in communities is that as communication doesn't reflect um, a conventional Western style of... of, of structure and so you know with our mob it's 80 percent body language so having to read that was was quite um, a challenge one of the things was um, and that I'll draw out of this was the slowly slowly approach um, it was not barging into the community community and dictating what you know uh, how we operate as city people um, rather you know we needed to learn um, that to earn the right to be in the community and for young people to commit to a long term, it was about relationship building. Um, and also that's not just with young people, that's about people's, young people's parents, their extended family and the community. It took a while for young people to come in, so what we did was broaden the program and brought little children in as well and catered for those. So, you know, we did things like um, Jewelry making, journal writing. Journal writing was really interesting because it enabled a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with young people and that really sort of got a dialogue happening.
سنة هنا نو هرنا وسامتين بنسيا بري يا نا نو وانغني جو غارو كوتو جو بنو يا سامتين بري هو عالي هو غارو عندنا دوس كوم So I just wanted to go through before, because I know time's pushing away here, just some of the challenges and risks of working out in this region. Um, and I'm going to run them off at 100 mile an hour, if you don't mind, and you can ask me later any detail. So, convincing bureaucrats uh, to fund the work and that the work is important. Emergency treatment and medical assistance for, for your team, new crew, coming from, you know, um, tiredness as being one. I remember going from community to community, I was absolutely exhausted. I boiled the kettle, the last place that I was at, um, the kettle was not attached to a cord. This time it was attached to the cord and I poured it right down my chest. Um, no medical clinic there and um, quick thinking of a staff member um, just poured cold water on me, uh, on my chest for two hours. Um, yeah, and I still had another two weeks to go out there. So, you know, I herniated a disc, driving on those ro roads, they're ter uh, terribly corrugated and, um, you know, having to send one of my crew up to Yulara, uh, where Uluru is, um, and driving a three-hour turnaround to go and get some um, pretty heavy painkillers. Sending another young crew member with an abscess tooth and flying them out. Dust storms are fierce and dangerous, road trains on and off uh, the highway, travelling long distance, unsealed and unpredictable road conditions, I've lost two trailers, uh, dangerous roads with camels, donkeys, dingoes, wild horses and bullocks, uh, arriving um, without accommodation and sleeping in a creek bed with your swag, no access to hot water and unclean premises, dogs and crows, renegade crew who forget where they are, they think that they're tourists, um, inappropriate dressing, speaking, behaviour, um, lack of interest in communication between service providers on the lands. Um, you arrive after driving for two days and you get who are you and why you're here, even though that you've called, you've followed up with an email and you fax them. Um, the distance and the expanse of country can be unsettling. It's fourth world conditions. Confronting the poverty is shocking. Um, after two days of driving, you arrive into your accommodation and the house is completely trashed. It's been broken into with an axe. Kids are hungry. It's not because they want to steal the TV. It's because they need food. Um, so you spend all night cleaning up um, before you can get to work first thing in the morning. The food is terribly expensive and very low quality. An aubergine will cost you $14. A loaf of frozen bread, 6 and an orange juice, $7. Um, we take our own food, reminding crew that they are not tourists again, so taking photos of uh, sacred country is not on. Um, sometimes having to remind them can cause conflict um, and a bit of tension. Remote work is expensive. Um, every bum on a seat costs money. Two weeks with a crew of 10 is $50,000. 
uh, long working days with multiple roles. Not only am I directing, but I'm the first up. I'm troubleshooting. I'm the camp cook and the cleaner. Um, a makeshift nurse. I lance boils. Um, I take young people to the clinic. Um, when I talk about a holistic approach, that's what I'm talking about. How do you get a young person to dance when they've got boils on their legs and they're in severe pain? That's the sort of thing that our crew stretches the extra way and I insist that our crew stretches the extra way. How do you get a young person performing when they're hungry? How do you take them out of their community when they don't have shoes on their feet? Um, cultural business occurs every year. This is uh, people living on their traditional lands. So sometimes you can go out there, particularly around Christmas time, you don't go, you can't access the land. It is traditional law in operation. I will get a spear. Traditional law applies to me. That's why I have to keep my crew under control. Um, so keeping myself and my crew safe is a priority. If the vehicle breaks down, it's not good. I recently got a vehicle. Um, it's a new Prado. It wouldn't start. I was sitting in the community for four days, time's ticking away. There was a toggle at the front of the vehicle the hire company didn't tell us about. We're six hours from Alice Springs. Um, not good. Don't let kids play CDs in the car. They run the battery down. Fuel is expensive. It's over $2 a litre. Sorry, business happens. Everything shuts down. Could be for weeks on time. So what I do with my crew is that we attend funerals with our young participants. In respect of the community, our work stops. Gatekeepers, not cool. Appalling attitudes and a lot of it is non-Indigenous people. Um, not, uh, there's no young people in the community. They've gone. They've decided to go down to Port Augusta. What do you do? You have to think quick on your feet. Being woke up in the middle of the night and there's a petrol, petrol sniffer standing at the end of your bed. You wake up from the fumes first, then you see them. For God's sake, don't light a cigarette. That gives you a bit of the essence of what our work is and what we confront. Um, I spend my three days a week working at Car Clue. My other job is now chair of uh, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Arts Board for the Australia Council, um, which is really challenging and I hope to bring this knowledge to uh, that environment as well and hope that you know the policies can uh, you know, help support people in remote regions as well as right across the country. Um, the lessons we've learnt, must-haves. Vision, passion, commitment, drive, determination, belief, energy, compassion, flexibility, good food, patience, ability, common sense, think quick. Also that Young people must be central to every decision-making process. Nurse on the APY lands. Two of the young people that I worked with that are in this photo were chronic petrol sniffers. Their lives completely turned around. They wanted to do that film. They wanted it to be a scary film. Everything about it, right down to the music, was composed by young people. The must-dos, um, interact, prepare, shift behaviours, challenge your thinking, enable young people to set their own benchmarks and expectations. Sometimes as adults we can determine what that is for young people and that's not on. Share, connect, breathe and importantly listen. Because if we don't listen, we miss out on some really great stuff and we block ourselves from um, learning. If there was a don't, and I just thought about this on the bus, um, is not to reinvent the wheel, but to value add to existing programs and structures and frameworks, and never ever drain the resources um, or services of the communities. That's really important. People are working under incredible conditions and environments, and they're really pushed as it is. So there's nothing worse than city folk coming up um, with all the trumps and whistles and going, right, this is how things are done. 
being humble is the number one thing that you can do. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you very much indeed for um, taking us deep into what you're doing um, and showing us what's happened with a um, very long established, what I was thought of as a very well resourced Australian program. You know, so it's great to see where it's gone and where it's going. Much appreciated. And I think I just want to emphasise what Leanne's kind of taken on. I think she's got her four days a week job, huh? And she has taken on the leadership of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Board of the Australia Council. She's been brought in to do that. So she's going to take all that stuff into a national leadership role. So let us tag along a little bit and keep learning with you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.